Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me for one last day with this record player, which I thought I was done with at the end of the, uh, the last uh, video, but you know, I gave up too soon. Watch this. It dropped the record. It dropped the record. So between the uh, end of the last video and this one, what happened was um, I was writing an email to the owner explaining to him that this this isn't going to work anymore for some for some internal reason I, I can't sort it out. And while I was doing that, I decided to look on eBay to see what it cost to get another one of these. Now this is a, an AW3. My, my impression now is there aren't too many of these different tripod type stands. Um, obviously there's one used in this player. There, uh, Gerard or Gerard record players use these. Um, when I look at the photograph though, I noticed a difference right at the end. And the black collar you can see there wasn't protruding as much on this one. So I just grabbed my pliers. Now I previously I had soaked this with WD-40 inside uh, as a recommended a recommended way of trying to fix these. Uh, I just took my pliers, grabbed onto that collar, and pushed it and snapped it snapped out. Well, since then this has been working. So I'm thinking maybe a little bit of dirt in here or something got jammed up and this thing just jammed up and got stuck up high. Now it's still not working perfectly so that's what we're going to focus on today. This is actually a complicated little mechanism here. You see how it's sitting right now? Can you see how it's sitting right now? It has no, the three tripod fingers are not out at all. But the upper grabbers, let's call them the grabbers up here, they're sticking out enough to grab a record. The size of this dimension here is extremely close to the size of a hole. If you think about it, this is a big issue on records. You can't, you can't be sloppy in the hole or the record is going to go easy. You, you, put it, you put it down, it'll be eccentric. And then you'll have a woo, woo sound to it. So they make these holes in all this stuff very precisely. There's not a lot of room. So let's take a closer look at what's happening there. I'll put this right in. In fact, let me get the close-up camera here going. Because even as I push this in, something happens with it that's worth seeing. Because as you push it in, you uh, depress the uh, you depress that piece at the bottom. So I'm going to push it in now, and you have to rotate it into its lock position, and then release it. And there it is. Now this is this is its normal waiting to do something position. Tripods out grippers in. Now look very carefully at the grippers. So the grippers are this upper part here. This part here. And at the very bottom of the gripper is a little tang sticking out. I can't, I can't uh, right there. That little tang is catching the record, unfortunately, when it's put on. When you first drop it on, the record comes down, catches the tang, and won't go any further. And these things are retracted right now. They don't retract any further. Let me push this down a little further. Uh, I don't see anything happening, but I'm shaking a fair bit when I'm doing that. But. Uh, so let's let's put a record on it now and we'll watch what happens. I've tried two or three records and they all do exactly the same thing because of the hole dimension. There you see it's catching. It's not making it down to the tripod. 
Now I'm going to operate the mechanism here. I'm going to let the record player go ahead. I have to hold this right in here. While I... Okay, I'm trying not to. Un... Okay, there we go. Now you see the record didn't move at all. Because the record didn't drop, it didn't. Uh, didn't activate. Actually, you know, it's come down on one of those. It slid past. The key thing is when the record is supposed to come right down and sit on the tripod. There. Now I've pushed it down onto the tripod. You can see the tripod popped open quite a bit. Now in this position, the grippers on the top can't grip that record. That record is too low now. They can't grip that one, but they can grip every other record that might be stacked on here. And we don't have any records stacked on it, but so now if you watch the operation of it, what you what what should happen is the grippers grip, then the tripod releases. So we'll just watch from up here. We can't watch top and bottom at the same time like this. Grippers. Drop. Then the grippers let go and the stack drops onto the tripod again. The problem is it doesn't drop. They don't drop past the little gripper tangs. That's the story. We are playing the record. Now I've yeah, I already broke one of my rules here. Uh, one of my rules is when I'm doing a project on video that I dare not come in the shop and fool around with the project while the video's not running. And uh, that, that's what happened with this. That's why I don't have a video of me discovering the problem. It was quite interesting. I mean, it was quite and quite cathartic too. The moment where it popped out, that was pretty good. Can't share it with it because I didn't video it. So, um, so I have tried a couple of things already on this, and uh, nothing, nothing has worked. So, you know, the owner of this, look at getting the record up and off here, is not easy either. Um, It'll certainly drop a single record if you push it down past the uh, past the grippers onto the tripod. Why those grippers won't retract all the way, or what I can do about them? Like I thought about filing that, that little hooky tooth part out, just filing that away, and then. Uh, but you know that may interfere with its ability to grab records. That that little that little hook is to make sure it can grab a stack of records and not drop them. Uh, bye. Yeah. Um. So let's, let's take another close look at it, but I really, really not too hopeful here. See, they're protruding just the tiniest amount. I'm looking at this one over here. Just the tiniest amount. Are they all doing the same? Maybe one is sticking out. Maybe that's the problem. So something's happening here. What's that little bit of... So that that's probably from rough handling with the record. Uh, that was probably a piece of the record, actually. You can see that little tiny tiny it's just about nothing there. It wouldn't wouldn't be much to uh, to remove it. Then it would drop one record easily. One record would come down on it if it if you stacked records, which I don't know if anybody would stack records anymore. I don't know if anybody ever ever really did that. I don't See, this one's sticking out a, a little bit more. And I believe this the spring action, well, I, I won't say it, because what I believe may not be true. I'm looking through these little slots here. You can kind of see what's going on inside a little bit.
trying to push it in, but it won't. It's, it's pretty solid there. You know, a record itself coming down over it would be it would be easy to push those things back if they are easy to push back. The record would do it. Well, you know, if I get in there and file it, what am I doing? I'm doing something permanent to it. I, you know, I had another record player in there is drilling holes in it and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. How bad is it to say when you put a record on this record player, you need to push it down over top of those things. Well, I guess the owner could purchase another one of these. These are not expensive. They're on the internet. Um, there seems to be only a couple different types. And they have to kind of push it, push it right down here and then wiggle it by. Um, I don't know that for sure. It looks like there's just a couple different types. And I think what we're going to do here is I'm going to get my beloved copy of this record and we're going to play it. And hearing of Atomic Rooster. So I did I mention in the last video which got chopped to pieces here and there. Uh, my sister brought this back from England. Uh, she went into a record store there and said I got a 12 year old brother uh, you got a record he would like and their comment was does he like heavy music well, she had no idea what he was talking about she said sure and this is what she brought back the old lady there ah what did she hear what's in her what's in her thing ah. those guys <laughs> that's cool man it's a cool bit of artwork there uh, those four guys, they look exactly like those pictures, too. So in this album, um, it's kind of a jazzy rock album. It's, it's quite, it's quite, I really like it. Um, the drumming in this album is fantastic. That's what I would say. And in fact, in a lot of the songs, the drumming carries the music, in fact. The rest of the music is rather simple, but the drumming is not. It's fantastic. Done by a guy named Paul Hammond. There he is, Paul Hammond. So... I'm gonna guess that's Paul Hammond right there, and unfortunately, uh, he's like some artists and musicians. He died too young, fooling around with drugs, and uh, so he's no longer around. So I really don't know too much more about his career, um, but he was definitely, definitely known as a, a top guitarist. Wait, don't put the record away. I'm gonna play it after that intro. I'm gonna play this record. I'm gonna let the copyright uh, happen to it. Uh, what I mean by that is the owners of the of the music will uh, claim a copyright against it on YouTube. I won't make my dollar on this uh, video. But I like this so much I'm gonna listen to it. That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm not gonna play the British uh, pressing that I have of this record and I'm just gonna let it let it play. I'm gonna turn off the microphones here.
snap and it's played again. <laughs> Come on, this was supposed to be the great finale here. Oh my gosh, it played it again. Why did it do that? It was completely unexpected. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> really, that was the finale. Oh my gosh, how come it did that? Can't win. Can't win with this guy. Can't win with this record player. Sound is off right now to the record. Well, I don't know what to think. Um, I'm pretty sure. You know what? Like this record player thinks there's a record to play whenever this plunger is pushed on the platter here. This plunger. With this record sitting there, it thinks there's a record to play. I don't think it can be sensitive to what's up here at all. So perhaps that's the normal function. It will just keep playing it over. That seems pretty stupid to me, actually. But how can this tell when there's no records here? Um, you know, the other record players have an overarm that sits here, and when the records are gone, the overarm drops low, uh, and that indicates to the record player that there's no records left. But there's no there's no overarm here. I don't know. I don't know. And then it shut off when I put the different uh, piece in here. Well, maybe we're still at 99, never going to make it to 100.
Just another indication that this is a really well thought out record player. This long arm here on the on off, on the uh, switch lever, goes all the way back to here. Now, most of these record players, the lever is short and only to here. The result with the short lever is when you push on it, you have to push pretty hard to get the, the turning force into it up here. And pushing hard begins to move the deck and shake the record player and cause the record to skip. This one has a long lever, so when you push on it, it takes very little force here to operate the, the rotating part up here. And the result is you don't move this very much. But you, can, you can operate this without any fear of causing the record to skip. Just another sign of uh, someone thinking hard about, about these guys. So anyway, that is the end of the road for this record player. Um, I don't think I can do any more for it. Uh, it's perfectly uh, playable. It'll drop a record now and uh, just won't shut off. I mean, now how bad is that? How bad is that? Well, thanks a lot for watching and uh, I'm getting back to a little transistor radio after this, I think. See ya.